ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Smite Pro League. Gandhi joined by DM. It is now time to get into our second match of That's the right. European side of the SPL. We have Mortality taking the stage. That's right. Mortality is going to attempt uh, to keep themselves in top contention here. They are currently 6-3. and three. If they lose this, they will be tied with Cloud9, HyperX, Exposed Secrets, <laughs> and Team Solo Mid, uh, ending the European week with all top four teams being 6-4. If they win this, they will be a win ahead and a loss ahead. Uh, so they are desperately looking for a win here against the uh, land uh, event champions, SK Gaming. Yeah, they, they really want this win. Now, in case you guys aren't familiar with how this SPL structure kind of works, the top two teams right. are going to be the ones who make it to Worlds, but going into the LAN event for your region, top two teams have a bye. So you're basically almost a shoe-in to make it to Worlds. Uh, that is the big thing here. But taking a look at the bands here, we're already going to see that's going to be Aphrodite gone. Aphrodite gets banned out very, very early. Uh, I like that. You know, Maniac is extremely strong with any god that does well in Joust. He's yep. one of the top Jousters in the entire world, so taking that away is smart. Um, also, it's going to limit his usage of Chang'e, who he's also very good with. Uh, Mercury, Janus, very and Rama bands. all get banned out very, very quickly, which yeah. means Europe didn't ban. And Nua. Yeah. Oh, there Europe, she goes. Europe. But, okay, so now it's time to see what the Europeans fear so much about Nua. Right. Right? But on the other side, you know, we are seeing SK kind of hover over Geb. So like that's going to be kind of like the switch up here. But the question is, is who is the other pick going to be? Well, uh, Nua a lot is on the not table. super ambiguous. She can be mid or she can be solo, which means we're either going to see that for Fexes or we're going to see that for Sayo. Uh, whereas on the right side, we're looking at a pick for Reels and a pick for Badger. Geb is going to be locked in, and it looks like we're going to lock in Freya as well. As they should. The two most dominant characters in the last game get locked in back-to-back. -back. I think Freya might be probably the most dominant jungler we're seeing, too, with the exception oh, of yeah. Garz's Thor. That's like... And all He's levels of Mercury <laughs> if he ever actually gets to that point. Mercury doesn't count. He right. gets banned all the time. Ooh, Zhang and Nemesis pick for the <gasps> same team to ensure that Zhang doesn't face the counter. This uh, is really quick bans. I, I like, I like I do that. Too. Uh, SK Gaming, though, again, does have Maniac and Captain Twig, two players who are extremely versed in Chang'e play, uh, who does decently against Zhang Kui and has a great endgame presence with Waxing Moon. Uh, this is something we might see today. We might. Well, the last pick here... Before yeah, the second banning phase here. SK. SK. This is going to be... I wonder who they are. Yeah, they have, a, they have a pretty... They have a very push. good team so far yeah. just because of how much damage Ooh, and peel potential okay. they have. Chalk is going to come out, uh, which means Freya can now be ADC. Chalk can be jungle or Chalk can be solo. Freya can ju uh, jungle. There's a, a good There's amount a of push there. I like yeah. that. Yep. Also, Chalk has a pretty good matchup against Jean Kui. A good, very safe lane, uh, lane clear, getting in at level 7 about the same time where Jean Kui becomes extremely dominant uh, and then has good healing potential and can make sure that he goes toe-to-toe, -to -toe, keeping that big man in check. You do think Jean Kui in the Chalk matchup is a good one? I would still say it's in favor of Jean Kui, but it's not terrible to the point where he's going to dominate the lane like we normally see from Jean Kui. Yeah, Jean Kui is just a beast. And, I mean, that's why you grab Nemesis, too. And taking a look, that is going to be Apollo who's going to be gone on the one side. On the other side, on to Mortality to Smart. pick their final one. And I wonder who it is going to be. Well, given the fact that SK has pick here uh, after the bans, and it looks like it's going to be Habwa, it's it's surprising to me hmm. to see that they're not going to pick up Apollo. This means to me, uh, I assume that maybe we're going to see the Freya ADC. I don't understand why they would ban out the current best hunter. You know, the, the Apollo-Rama thing yeah, could no, be no, questioned. I, I, I but Rama it. was already banned. So, Ron being banned, Apollo being gone. So, what are they going to go for here? I think this might have been a this might have been a, a, a misplay here. I don't. I, I still don't know what, entirely what they're going for. Um, but Tyr okay. gets locked in. So this this is going to be Freya in the duo lane. This is going to be Tyr or Chalk in the jungle. Tyr or Chalk in the solo. That's that's what it seems like to me. Tyr might be going into the solo just because of his sheer tankiness going right. up against Jean Kuei. They might favor that just a little bit more. Sure. He they has might. great wave clear. He has great kill potential. He can keep himself alive with heals. Uh, left side, final picks coming out for Mortality. This is going to look like it was a Neath hover for a second. They actually switched it to On Her. I like the On Her. Mohax has been seeing a lot of yeah. success here with On Her. And uh, that leaves up to his support, which it looks like it is going to be hovered over Athena. So that is going to be a very, very difficult duo lane to deal with, even though, you know, I know you don't like Athena. I don't. And I, I do I, not like Athena. I, I would have went Bacchus. <laughs> but Athena does get locked in. She has great initiation potential, uh, but as we've seen, that can also be your undoing. Right side looks like Maniac's going to lock in Ra. 
which means we're probably okay. going to see Ra go to the mid lane. That's going to get switched over to Captain Twig. It looks like Maniac will be taking Chaka. Zeros is going to bring Tyr uh, into the jungle. Badger, of course, uh, going to be going reels to the duo lane. It is a Freya Hunter. Okay, so explain to me how the Freya Hunter works. She banishes people, and then when they land, she kills them with magic. Is the build the exact same? I mean, uh, as the jungle, pretty yeah. much. I mean, you're looking for your demonic grips, you're looking for your fatalis, and, you know, from there you start to counter build. It could be more defense, it could be more uh, damage. It depends on what really is going on in the map, but having Geb there is going to be so strong because while his wave clear isn't great, especially compared uh, to someone like Shield, uh, you know, the Shield Wall from Athena, he has the ability to save Freya. If she actually ever gets that stun off onto on her, Shield's going to bring him right out of it. Yeah. So that's going to be very, very difficult for DeFrezzy. But, you know, on here does have a lot of burst. If right. they can catch, oh, they amount. have to really force the issue here off the break. And they're not on Chaos side either. So they have to really force this issue. I'm exp I would love to see an early jungle rotation and really oh, put pressure that's what in I'm looking on Freya. At. It yeah. has to be that. Well, actually, I was looking at the other side. Like, Zeros has the real oh. rotation. I mean, Tier, you know, blink in, get the Fearless. With a Freya and a Geb there, that will be a kill. Whereas Nemesis, I mean, she gets the ult off there, and then maybe an Athena taunt. But after that, I mean, a Geb shield plus her ultimate is going to bring her out of the fight. It's going to be very, very hard to gank the Freya Geb lane. They really need to hope that Freya overextends, commits to a kill that she's not going to be able to get, and they're able to turn it around. And basically what you're asking is for pro players to not actually be pro players and to make <laughs> terrible, <laughs> terrible mistakes, which is always going to be tough. But Well, it's not always a terrible mistake. Sometimes you just think, I have enough damage to yeah. do this, and they dodge one hit, and then it's just, you know, it's a it's a downhill run from there. Yeah. Now, tell me a little bit, little bit about this tier jungle, right? Sometimes right. we see tiers so far in, like, the first couple of weeks go into the solo lane, but we haven't really seen too many tier jungles Right. What, uh, what's his strong side? Well, you, we used to see him a lot before the Warriors, and especially Tyr, got nerfed so heavily. I mean, he has good movement. He has a, a, an ult that makes him CC immune, allowing him to jump over walls, initiate, or uh, actually escape from fights. But then with Blink and the Fearless combo, he's going to be able to get into, the, uh, get into the back line, bring mages towards him, do enough damage to start bursting people down, and setting up his team for amazing opportunities. Now, uh, worst case scenario, if he gets in there and, and he misses the Fearless, he's still pushing himself towards his team. If he gets the Fearless, and then they, they, you know, get CC immune out, that's probably a beads usage, so he's okay. still wasting their abilities. I mean, there's a lot of potential in the character. He just doesn't have the same, uh, you know, I touch you, you're going to die, potentially sure. he had six months ago. Now, looking at, you know, Sayo actually grabbing Nuwa, so right. it actually is going to be effective in the middle, which is going to be Zhang Kui taking on Ra. Okay. Does Zhang Kui build, does he kind of rush that early Divine Ruin to deal with the healing of Ra, or does he not have to worry about that at all? Um, it's going to be hard to say. We've seen them do that a lot, but I don't know if we're going to see it this time. But let's talk about mortality. We're going to see Sayo right here going Nuwa, the character we don't get to see nope. very often in EU, going to the solo lane. Fex is, as you can see, going to be taking Jean Kuei to the mid. Uh, Frezzy, of course, is our guardian player. He's going to be playing Athena today. Moex uh, with a very high uh, KDA right now, with on, especially with on her. Uh, we're yep. going to see him going to that dual lane, looking for early kills. And then finally, Irafer in the jungle. Uh, playing Nemesis. Raffer up to date with the haircut there. Trim sides, longer on the top. We call that the DM here in America. We don't. On the other side, SK Gaming Maniac is going to be the solo lane. Captain Twig is going to be the mid lane. Reels the Hunter. Badger, Guardian. And last but certainly not least, Zeros is going to be in the jungle. Very interesting picks here from SK. Let's see if it'll play out for them. Getting into the game here, remember guys, um, first seed contention is up here. If Mortality loses this game, we'll, we'll, we will have a four-way tie at the end of the I third hope that week. Actually hope That's, I would actually be pretty incredible. If Mortality wins, they will have a 7-3 win-loss ratio compared to second, third, and fourth being at 6-4. Uh, SK Gaming right now in fifth place at 3-6, and Team Coast way on bottom at 2-8. Yeah, T Team Coast has, <laughs> they have a pretty big mountain they have to climb here, to say the very least. But uh, players are going to be going ahead and hop in here. Nothing too unusual here from the builds just yet. And I wonder, I wonder if we will see an early invade. You know, I was talking to Snoopy last night, and he was like, you know, the problem is, is that, you know, there's so many ward coverage, and you kind of give up a lot of your jungle if it goes right. south. So how, how do you, how do you, what do you think you should do? 
going against Chaos. I, with, I think it is now officially a 60%. I mean, it's, it's, it's all about invading. I mean, they have a pretty good invade comp as well. I mean, uh, Sayo is going to have pretty decent control there. Uh, Fexes can go for the card, do a massive amount of damage. Uh, not to mention a giant slow. Frezzy is great initiate with Confound, and then on her, probably the strongest hunter at this level in the game. Um, Nemesis doesn't really offer all that much, though. Whereas on the other side, uh, Captain Twig, if he lands the beam, could do a decent amount of damage. Badger has the knockup, of course. Maniac doesn't have a lot of control. Reels doesn't have a lot of control. But if Zeros gets to the back line, especially with that level 1 blink and finds that Fearless, that is a guaranteed kill. So if they do invade, they could put themselves in a bad spot. Now, why did Fexus decide to go with the multi, two multi potions and a mana pot? This is, yeah, this is a, a, a little weird to me. It's, it's surprising that he's gone into so yeah. much mana consumption here, uh, whereas normally we're seeing a lot of health pots come out. I would like to see maybe an invasion. Try to, you know, try to use that against him. He doesn't have a oh. lot of healing. Five per second, it's not good enough. Yeah, and Zero's actually electing to just go Bumba's hand one and blink one. Oh, yeah, one. he's got the level one blink. He's looking for kills, uh, which means early on, if Nua steps out of position, she is dead. She does not have an escape mechanic. It's going to be very, very difficult for her. Keep in mind, SK, you could argue that two of their losses have come just because they've had to deal with substitutes, but most recently, they got handled pretty hard by TSM. Yeah. So now let's see if their luck will change here versus Mortality, who has been a little bit off and on with a lot of it really, really, really Let's watch zeros. Style. Let's watch zeros. Actually, he does go for the swing. He's five seconds out from his ability to move forward. He's looking for it. He doesn't get it. Sayo just a little bit too fast. Zeros, if he didn't throw that auto attack, he would have had a kill there with the blink, or at least an opportunity. He kind of crippled himself there. Oof. A little bit of damage here coming out of Maniac. This is going to be the lane to watch. You know, recently we've been watching just two juggernauts battle one another, but there's a lot of kills that can happen from this lane. Look how far back they're staying. <laughs> they, they're going to get pushed here. There's guaranteed. Nemesis has the probably the worst clear that you could hope for on top of the fact uh, that Tyr has some of the best. But look at what Sayo is able to do. Even with the wave pushed up, they barely take any damage whatsoever, though that Thunderstrike has something to say about that one. Yeah, Maniac's really going to keep them at bay. And look at this, Zeros is trying to bait this out. You know, they're, they're like, there's got to be something fishy. He doesn't know he's that he's standing, standing on, on a ward. ward. Yeah. Oh, oh, is uh, he oh. going to find it? Oh, man. Sayo, oh. too quick. Understands what's going on. Now, they're looking towards Raffer here, but he'll have Swift Vengeance. There's not really an issue. In fact, Zeros recognizes this, walks right past him. Uh, the early game pushed out there, and that blink's going to be on cooldown for, it looks like, 90 seconds. Taking a look here at Mortality's duo lane, D, Frezzy, and Moex. Had them push all the way up to the tower. Things are going according to plan for them. And unfortunately, you know, Mortality, with on her, you really want to see this early kill. You right. want to see him get this first blood, get a little bit of extra gold, come back in the lane and continue to steamroll. But it's going to be hard against a gap. I would like to see Badger get a little bit more aggressive there and actually take the Impale to the chest. Stand in the creep wave and negate his damage because if the Impale hits a god, it's not going to get to the back line, which means the archers will have more health and they'll be able to use that push effectively. Uh, but they're kind of just... And it's funny because they're tanking up the damage anyway. Badger would have lost less health in the long run had he just chilled out and went for that went for that block. Well, Zeros is going to go ahead and acquire the damage buff himself here, rotates into the back of the Harpies. Meanwhile, everything's still just looking fine. I mean, Reels is keeping up with on her as well, which is going to be huge. You kind of expect the Euro game to go a little bit in favor here of Moex, but that hasn't been the case. And, you know, even at level 5, if he does manage to get that hit, it's just not going to be enough. Plain and simple. I mean, they're going to have the Geb Shield. Yep. They're going to have the Freya Ultimate. There's a lot that they can do to really shut this down. Yeah, it is going to be tough, and I, they're actually under-leveled as well. I mean, they're going to be right there with the experience, but, you know, any little bit, you don't want to give Reels any kind of advantage. We've seen how much of a pain Freya has been in the SPL, but more importantly here, these mid-harpies are getting ready to come up. Ra is going to go ahead and go for the right, and we're going to see Mortality go up. So yesterday, Scott and I were talking about uh, Hunters, and he, and he asks me, he's like, why don't we see on her as much as people like Apollo and people I like was saving. Rama? I was saving that question until later. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> you know, and I had a, a few things that I said, but you know what? I'm going to revert my answer to this question. I'm going to change it to the fact that 
he just doesn't do well against a lot of the current top guardians. He did well against Sobek. He does well against Ymir. He does not do well against Athena. He does not do well against Geb. Why he does not do well against that? Wukong. Well, especially You're against Geb. You're going to take Geb. my question. I'm going to elaborate on sure, it. Sure. I mean, uh, in this situation, he gets the stun against the wall. We talked about before. Shield's going to cleanse it. The brunt of the damage from Desert Fury is going to be blocked out. And then, in this case, Freya takes to the skies and deals back three times as much damage for the same cooldowns. In fact, overall, they'll have spent less mana. Athena has to be super, super super aggressive here. Uh, the thing is, if she uses that preemptive strike, she's going to either be A, forced to ult out, or B, she's going to get caught. And uh, Zeros is looking for a possible He's spotted. blank. Uh, I don't think he is Oh, no, no, Raffer, Raffer spotted him. Oh, hit with Raffer the rotation. spotted him. Yeah, there's no war. It's Raffer eyes. spotted yeah. him. <laughs> I was like, how did he get spotted? Uh, Zero's going to go ahead and try to do a little bit of damage. Oh. Nothing. He's not looking for the kill, really. Meanwhile, Sayo does have to worry about Maniac here. There's going to be a lot of clear potential here. Well, I don't know Sayo about doing that. A good job. I think Maniac has to worry about Sayo. Yeah? Sayo actually used the metal way, way too soon. Uh, they didn't. She didn't have the opportunity to get the stun off. She actually casted it kind of backwards and then missed the fog anyway. Uh, but he's doing a pretty good job. I mean, this is not a matchup uh, that you would think is in Chalk's favor. I mean, Nua's clear is outrageous. She's super safe. Great burst damage. A little bit of movement speed. Though Chalk has a much higher win percent. Yeah. Uh, well, in Nua's. <laughs> In favor of Nuwa here, she gets banned out a lot, but there. I mean, Chalk, you know, a little bit tankier. Sure. If it forces into the late game, it makes a little bit of sense, but I'm very interested to see why these Europeans are so afraid of Nuwa. So far, I haven't seen anything crazy out of her yet. You know, people are going to say that Nuwa's endgame is amazing, but Chalk's really no slouch in that regard. He becomes nigh on unkillable on top of the fact that he has a giant AoE silence. It's not going to come down to which god is better in the in the late game. It's going to be which god is allowed by the enemy team to do their combo the hardest. Oh, well, D. Frezzy actually switching things up here, not worrying about the tier 1 boots, but hold on, Zero is just going to come Speaking in. Speaking of this silences. This is going to be Raffer getting silence here. Zero is just nope. going to do a little bit of damage, but... D. Frezzy actually going with the cloak as his first purchase. Now, this could unlikely be Magi's Blessing. I don't think it's going to be Spirit Robe. It's likely we're going to see Hide of the Urchin coming out, but this is going to do two things. One, it's going to delay his gold gain massively. Looking at the board right now, he's at 3,200. Badger's already at 33, and his gains are going to be much higher with those Midas boots. Uh, number two, it's going to ensure that Sovereign's he's not going to be online for much longer as well, because he's not only gaining less gold, but he's spending more to get the hide online. And then finally, he and has to ensure to get his boots. Yeah, well, After I was going to say, he still has to get kills to make sure that Hide oh, of the Urchin yeah. is actually paid for. Wow. So that's going to be a little bit questionable here. He might have just put one point into it to deal with reels, but I'm not sure. We'll see if it works out for him. Meanwhile, in the middle, the I mean, Fexus is doing well. I mean, he hasn't, you know, this is the John Quay, right? Like, he's not going to have, right. you're not going to ever go to the mid lane and be like, oh, yeah, he's uh, less than half shields. <laughs> it's, oh, he's still full shields. Not to mention he hasn't ulted yet, uh, which means he has full stacks, which means he has a lot of passive protections. In fact, looking at the board here, uh, we're going to see, let's see, defensive stats for Jean Quay. Yeah, 70 magical protection, 74 physical protection on a, a mage who does ridiculous damage and is level 10 at 7 minutes. Like, that's scary stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's a beast, man. He's a god for a reason. Ah. All right. Uh, I'm trying to I'm oh, trying to make okay. it feel that's how I feel with you. Right, but I'm funny. <laughs> 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 to each his own, bro. Ah, uh, God, knew I was going to get at least a free wave. Oh, I was surprised here. there in the mid lane. I actually just saw Fexus throw the card into the jungle instead of the creep wave, uh, looking for an opportunity to do what could have been a minor amount of damage comparatively to clearing the wave. He'll still get an opportunity here to heal himself back up, but that was effectively wasted mana. And given the fact that he's getting pretty close to half and the looming fights uh, are approaching, I doubt that we're going to have an opportunity for him to really spend too much more mana unsafely as he throws another card at zeros. <laughs> <laughs> he just likes throwing cards out, Ooh, man. Maniac, though. Call him the damage. dealer. Uh, but, you know, Fexus has yet to be back. He's sitting on a lot of gold in pocket. And, you know, he has no need to go back at all. He is getting basically free. Oh, here. Zero's fine. Sayo, this could be trouble. He's going to be forced up into the air. Storm Call's going to hit Raffer as Athena comes down. Sayo's going to turn himself back around. First Blood's going to be right there for Frezzy as he dies for Zeros, who should have gotten the kill, but the communication was weak. The rotation was strong for mortality, and they're making a really, really good statement saying that they came to play today. Hey, well, there's the kill, making that cloak kind of pay off here, but there is going to be another engagement Missed here it. in the mid. Missed the ultimate right there. We're going to see Raffer rotate as well. Still a big play for mortality. Now up 800 gold.
<sighs> All of a sudden, you know, this game went from us sitting here just chatting like little girls to action. <laughs> I like it. Uh, it looks like we're going to approach almost the nine minute mark as the buffs start to respawn. Uh, speed and left blue on top are going to be picking up. Uh, both blues on bottom plus the speed buff, or rather red buff, are all ready to go as well. So there's a lot for the junglers to be doing over the next 45 seconds or so. You're going to see less ganks and more farming opportunity. Yeah, and now. Where is Zero's Bex going? Is finally getting some. You know, he actually was only able to get tier two boots there. Uh, which I was expecting there to be a lot more, but as we take a look, Moex will be getting the blue buff, and everyone will be returning to lane. I would like to see some deep wards here from SK over on the Fire Giant side, just because, I mean, Nuwa's been left alone the entire time with no jungle rotation, with the exception of Athena coming over. Um, so, two things to note right now. The Heart of the Urchin is online, so oh. they're going to be looking to try to force more fights and get that stacked up ASAP, because until that thing is stacked up to at least six stacks, it is generally not super effective. At six stacks, it is more than paid for, and that's wh where you're really starting to peel away uh, from the other defensive items. Number two, Badger has opted into a very early Wrath of the Gods, meaning there could be an attempt, uh, at least earlier, a lot earlier than expected, uh, at the Gold Fury. All right, and number three is a question that I I can't answer. So why did Captain Twig build a shell of absorption? You know, absorption? as run as you said question three, I hovered over it. <laughs> shell of absorption is completely ridiculous. It's, again, 45 protections for five seconds on top of all damage being reduced by 15% statically. This is going to open up a slot for Badger, which could be a weakening or enfeebling curse. This could be another blink for double initiation from Badger and Zeros. I mean, this is giving him a lot of opportunity, and given the fact that Captain Twig hasn't opted into beads or ages they're gonna need extra appeals here but he has opted into defense with the shell it's just it's curious i i definitely agree that this is a a curious option and he has heavenly agility as well oh i love so that. raw really taking a little bit more defensive i wouldn't be surprised if we almost see like a void stone come out I wouldn't mind the Void Stone. Uh, not to mention it would increase the damage of uh, Reels and Badger by a small amount, given yep. the fact that it does have that uh, aura penetration. It's also going to stop Captain Twig from taking as much damage from Sio, Frezzy, uh, and Fexus. Yeah, well, Badge is going to be one bad dude. He does have his Midas boots there, and we are seeing a little bit of pings here. They're just calling down for the damage buff here. Zeros is going to be able to drop that. Uh, for his teammate, and this, this is all going according to plan. Again, Vex is always willing to move up in card uh, before Zeros gets in there. Remember, um, with level 3 blink, it's going to be a 3 second timer uh, before he's able to blink out of combat. By putting that card on, it's going to be 8 seconds before he can blink again, guaranteed. Yeah, well, speaking of DeFrezzy and Badger, we actually do have a support comparison between these two. So as that comes up onto the board here, you will see the kill, death going to Badger, the win-loss going to DeFrezzy, but the gold per game going to DeFrezzy as well. You know, uh, speaking of Badger, Badger is actually currently fighting against Mortality, which is one of the few teams in EU that doesn't house one of his former teammates. Uh, he faces no members of the original Bipolar Method, uh, strictly fighting against players that he normally uh, wouldn't have played with, uh, which is why you might see him being a little bit more careful than usual. Generally speaking, he's a very, very aggressive support because he understands the way that his opponents play. In this case, the unfamiliarity is really playing dividends here, which is why you're seeing so many great rotations come out from Frezzy and why Badger's been so late to the party. Well, the mid harpy is getting ready to come up here. We are going to see a potential big grouping here. I think they walked over the ward there, so they might rotate to the right. Uh, Fexus does have to be careful here as Captain Twig is going to just push that lane back a little bit. But we do have Raffer coming into the party as well. This might be huge. Oh, more pressure coming through. The mid camps are going to go down, looks like, to SK with no problem. Right yeah. side, Sayo is getting a ridiculous amount of damage. That's going to be the tower. Yeah. That is going to be that's that's going to be big for them as well. There's a lot of more universal gold, kind of keep them in the lead here as the right harpies are going to come up. This might be going to SK as well here as Raffer's going to be struggling with it. Oh, Raffer is struggling. Uh, Zero's moving in. Captain Twigs beams coming back off cooldown again. He forces the immunity. Zeros is going to push this one back, and that'll be oh, this might be trouble though. Zeros doesn't really have his move anymore. I'm surprised to see that we didn't get an engagement. Fex has had the splinter. I just didn't love that. I did not love that. Yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, we noticed that DM actually put on his vest for just a second, <laughs> so that uh, explains our technical problems, but what do you think so far about this? I took the vest off. You did? Everything's good. Um, all right, guys, it looks like we're having some kind of technical issue. Yep. Um, we'll be back in just a few seconds with the conclusion of Mortality in SK Gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The issues are fixed. We're going right back into the game here. 
as we are going to stop start on board here with Fexus. I want to see them get more aggressive here on Mortality. They have a small lead already. They have a great mid-game team. Uh, Athena's going to start to fall off as we get closer to the end game, uh, whereas Gev is going to get much and much, much stronger. Uh, not to mention, right now, Jean Kui is a monster. There's very little they can do to contend with his damage. The longer they draw this out, the more it's going to hurt them. Yeah, Jean Kui's basically been able to stay in lane the entire time, not have to worry about anything at all. But on the other side here, we are seeing Sayo actually rush out that Chronos Pendant. I like the Chronos Pendant. I mean, this is something I didn't really love before, but it's it's really starting to make a comeback onto certain characters, and it, it plays really well, especially on a character like Sayo, or Sayo's Nua, who just has a ton of damage, but she needs to be able to set up combos with things like minions, and those things have a very long cooldown. Yep, Sayo was actually able to push all the way down, grab that tower as well. And so this is the Sayo you're basically wanting to see. You know, we've seen him kind of get up in the action. He's got one assist. You would like to see that getting a kill instead of Athena, which is actually the first blood. But regardless, he is still playing very, very well. The only time he loses is when he gets steamrolled in lane. You know, I actually don't mind him getting the first blood there, uh, considering the fact that now he's actually even gold with Badger, who built Midas Boots. This is making the height of the Urchin a lot more cost efficient. Well, Raffer comes in on the rotation here, and finally Fexus is going to go back. What do you think Fexus is actually going to build? It's it's hard to say. Um, He's got a lot of options. He, Spear of the Magus is probably going to be most uh, most effective, given the fact that Card has multiple procs. He'll be able to easily stack it up onto multiple people, especially with his ultimate. Uh, though Voidstone could help as well. It would increase the damage of both Frezzy uh, and Sayo, on top of the fact of reducing the damage to himself by Twig, Badger, and Reels. Either one could be fine. In fact, we might even see both. Yep, and we're actually seeing Captain Twig actually start building this uh, Warlock Smash. Magis. Which is which is really good, especially on how this lane is going. I mean, it's so farm oriented. You might as well start building some second items. Rezzy jumping way away from the meta here. What? No sovereignty in sight. Going to be going into Witchblade. Now, uh, Badger going to have to move forward here. Moex, can he force the reset? He's actually ensured that he went oh. for it. A lot of damage coming through, especially with Sayo. Captain Twig is getting very low, however, and they're turning a lot of damage to Raffer, who was basically invincible in that last yeah, fight. Yeah, Raffer taking some damage Beats. now. It's finally... Oh, great wall. Just going to shut him off there. Is it great, though? Great for... <laughs> great for SK. The only major misplay I saw there was Moex should have put a shot directly into the Gold Fury to ensure they had an opportunity to go for the steal. They shouldn't have forced the reset there. They were close enough to go for it, and if they baited just a little while longer, it would have resulted at least two kills. Even losing the Gold Fury for two kills at this point, while mathematically in gold wouldn't have been worth it, they would have had enough tower pressure with the global presence coming out from uh, Sayo as well that they could have pushed forward and really turned that one into a huge win for themselves. You know, I just got to say, the Pixel Buster Freya is... So awesome. It's outrageous. It is so awesome. I that's, love it. That's Max, man, one of our uh, concept artists right now here at Hyra Studios. He uh, actually drew that uh, one night when he was bored and posted it on Reddit. And, like, oh. it wasn't even something he was working on. He just posted it. He was like, oh, yeah, by the way, <laughs> yeah, this would be a cool idea. We are going to see Raffer actually get ready to start this here. They might just I don't like be, this. They might be provoking the fight as it is going to finally be reset here. D. Frezzy now hopping out of this as well. This is just going to be a complete disengage. And meanwhile, Sayo still doing whatever he wants. If you take a look in the very top right corner of your minimap, he's almost got that tier two. This was a bad play here. Um, coming out from zeros, he placed a sentry ward down to counter, and he should have checked his minimap. He could have noticed that Frezzy still had a sentry ward in his inventory. Frezzy comes back, drops it in between two wards, picking up not only the sentry they just dropped, but another ward they just dropped as well. And then, oh, what was this? Why did he do that? Badger went and dropped another ward inside of it. That's 235 gold worth of wards picked up in 15 seconds. A huge loss there for SK. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, sometimes, dude, things just happen. All right? You got you to gotta roll with the punch. And that was just a complete lack of situational awareness. I, I, you know, you think that comes down to communication, though? That wasn't communication. That was just lack of understanding of what was going on. They're not checking player inventories. It seems like they're starting to get defeated. This this is what it looks like to me when a team starts to tilt. And given the fact that it's only 1-0, they, they have to shape up, man. They need to put their smiles on because this isn't good enough. Fexus was trying to bait the back right there, really trying to entice Captain Twig to come out just a little bit more, but he is not going to bite on that. Meanwhile, you know, everything else just still just fine as dandy, and I wonder what it's going to be. It's got to be a Gold Fury fight, right? Because the, both teams have been so, like, casual with the Harpies. Well, 
Well, that's what I that's what what I want to see. I want I want to see more presence come out for the junglers. More focus on to getting the gank in there. I mean, while Nemesis generally has a stronger presence in the game, Tier has such incredible control in terms of ganks and being able to shut things down. I mean, he's able to blink in there, get damage done, push people in the bad situation, force purification beads or greater Aegis. I mean, there's a lot of things he can do, and we're just not seeing, seeing zeros go for it enough. Dude, it is it is crazy how wild D Frezzy's build is, man. Yeah. He's got that Witch Blade yeah, out he's, already. He's he is, going full, he's he's going trying full to try on. something else here. As Vexus is going to spot Badger right there, and he's just going to do a little bit of damage to but him, you know, throw a card on him. That's even with it. the first blood, he's now 300 gold behind again. This is going to start continuing to go on because not only is he getting less gold per second, but his rotations are vastly slower, at least were up until he got the Witch Blade, which of course is 15% movement speed, only 3% slower than the Midas Boots. I think he kind of waited as, you know, at least I have my global presence. If anything gets crazy, I sure. should be there for the rotation, but I, j I guess we can only kind of wait until the end to see what's going on with it. I'm looking more towards Frezzy. I mean, we should see more rotations going to the right side. Force people over there and then rotate back to the left with that global presence. Now, it looks like Reels did get the Sentry Ward down. Uh, Fexus himself has one as well as he comes back. Uh, Sentry Ward in the inventory for Captain Twig as well. Uh, so they're going to have to be careful about who places this, when they place it. Right now, Captain Twig has it in the inventory and he's standing on a ward, which means this time they know it and they should use it for counter only. And Captain Twig has built so defensively right Look here. Look at all these Sentry Wards in the inventory. I, I love it. It. Jeez, I love it. You know, they just actually need to get them down, though. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's hard. one thing to buy them. Keep trading over and over. It's a big loss of gold. Yeah, it's a huge loss. So the players really just kind of feeling everything out here. I mean, on her, by the way, Moax is doing a good job. I mean, he's keeping up with Reels. I guess I should say Reels is keeping up with him. And on her, this is going to be scary because, you know, we've said about it so early. He's all about that early game presence. So we're 20 minutes down. Gold Fury's finally uh, getting hovered on once again. I, I mean, I really, for a second, thought they were going to go for it, and they don't. They're just, uh, everyone seems too afraid. And it's strange to me to see Mortality so passive, given their team. Uh, but at the top side, we're seeing Sayo put so much pressure onto that tower. And the Tier 2 is almost dead just from him pushing, comparatively to that Tier 1 still being full health. We finally see a Gold Fury start. This could be trouble. Oh, it's down! Oh, wow, that was a quick Gold Fury here. Is now Badger's going to be there. Moex takes up, gets banished up in the sky here. So much damage from Captain Twig. Using the heal, down he goes to Fexus. That's the last person you wanted to get that kill. He's going to make it in there, misses the card, actually connects with Reels. Badger's going to be able to disrupt it, and in comes more damage oh. here. Down goes Reels. Will Badger go down as well? Zeros is in the mix. He can Trouble. possibly go down as well. The card is on him. Will he get Trouble. the next stick? He does. My God, what a double. That, that was a four-person swing right there. Like I said, let them go for the Gold Fury. Go for the counter-initiate. They have the stronger team right now, and they used it perfectly. Frezzy finding a kill and three assists there. Going to put four stacks and hide the urchin as he presses forward into the tower. Oh, Maniac God. takes shield wall one. Maniac takes shield wall two, plus <laughs> a whole bunch of damage. Deicide for mortality. That is huge. That's going to result in one tower. They could if they really no, want they're to gonna push go. the Phoenix No, they're going to go for it. They should. They really should. They have time. They know Badger's going to be up in five seconds. There's the retreat ping. I think they're going to oh, go into gonna the mid. Off. They're going to back off. Yeah. You know, well, they kind of have to if I you're taking this. a look at the health. Look at this in mid lane. Frezzy goes back, gets full health, and teleports back to Moex immediately uh, to get pressure into the mid lane. Doesn't even wind up spending all that much gold. In fact, he still has 2,200 gold in his inventory. That's how fast he was out of that base. He could have been maxed and bought something. Oh, and look I don't at, think he was ready for it. Yeah, and look at this. Sayo comes back with a Book of Thoth. Woo! <laughs> he is. Now, why did he decide to go with the Thoth instead of the Warlocks? Um, he doesn't need the health, I guess. Oh, Zero's blinking in. He's going to find Dr. Frezzy there. Doing some damage. There comes the fog. Trying to keep him safe. Frezzy's just trying to get out of here. Taunt going to keep him alive for a little while. He's getting blocked out, though. Super low going to go down. But they're spending a lot of resources and a lot of time for a support. There should be a counter initiation here, but it looks like they're gonna back off six to two though, or rather six to one. Mortality just has a huge lead right now. Yeah, and Sayo had a great uh -oh. chance to blow him all up, this. but is this? This is actually gonna be a fire giant attempt here. There Keep is a little eye. bit of coverage here. 
Sayo, keep your eye on Fexus right now. He still has recall demons. He's trying to get into the back line. There he goes. We see the first hand of the gods coming out. The card only applies to Badger. It's getting low as Sayo actually does wind up going oh, down there. Oh, God. Maniac has some damage. Fire Giant for SK Gaming. Badger goes down. Maniac super low as Raffer tries to go forward. He's actually getting super out damaged by Reels, but Fexus does find zero. They trade two people. 4-1 plus FGSK keeping themselves afloat. Raffer now actually looking. He's going on the hunt here. He knows one's going to be there, and he's going to be able to spot him. Down goes Captain Twig. The heal, not enough. And now here goes their jungle. This is going to result in a mid tower as well, assuming that Wave gets pushed. And that's going to be three members down for SK Mortality. Although they lost the Fire Giant, they're still in control. That's right. I mean, they have two people at FG right now. They have Reels, of course, who can plug out serious, serious damage. And they have Maniac, uh, who can definitely use the extra HP5. Unfortunately, uh, aside from that they're still very much behind their 10,000 experience behind 5,500 gold as well as pressure comes into the mid lane too much damage coming to reels no ultimate available he's not going to be able to get out of this one if they're smart Fexus does find it he'll likely trade here but I'm sure they're screaming worth as they just traded fire giant for pretty much a normal Jean Quay and Badger doing a good job there just disengaging although he did blow his ultimate he still saved his teammates there in the fight so they know the cataclysm's down Wait, but by the time spirit robe is it? Dude, Frezzy's just doing whatever he wants. Hey. <laughs> hey, dude, let him do him. Well, Spirit Robe... Let him live. Dude, Spirit Robe does a lot. I mean, this is going to be 55 magical protection, which you can use. It's going to be 10 physical protection as well, 125 health, 10% cooldown, and then, of course, 3 second, 15% damage mitigation. After he's hit with hard crowd control, you're looking at knockups, you're looking at stuns, uh, things like mesmerize. Uh, so he has a lot of defense, which is going to give him a much bigger presence as they get into fights. Badger, not really showing up so far, has gone into a pretty normal build, and it's not paying off. Well, let, let me tell you about my man, Moax. All right, he, his burst damage has been amazing in these team fights, but that's only because they've actually focused Geb out. Geb has not been in the team fights when Moex is there, so right. he's getting free stunts. And, you know, a lot of the time, Geb's getting caught, and his team is not peeling. SK just doesn't seem to have the same teamwork. And, you know, I've seen it on Twitter, you've seen it on forums, on Reddit. People think Sayo's starting to fall off, and you're going to see the 0-1 and think he's not contributing. But there is no tower on the Tier 2 side on right, and that was him he's got alone. six assists. And, yes, yeah, six assists out of 11 right, get, kills. Get the baby out the house. Yeah, seriously. That baby's so, way too loud. Moving forward here, it looks like they're going to try to go for it. A Thunderstrike and Torrent going to clean up the minions, but this tower is basically dead. They need to commit to either fight or tower. They're split right now, but Maniac takes too much from Moex. He's going to go down. They're turning There's to double. zeros. Free double right there, and now they're pushing forward once again. Yeah, Moex is just going to throw down the damage oh. here. This is going to be routine. Raffer just cleans that up for the double. Isn't able to find Badger there, but that's going to be four dead. This is going to oh, be Mortality's it. game. Yeah, I think this is it. Are they going to move forward? Oh, they're going to go right. I don't super love this call here. They still had four people and only the support to stop them. Frezzy could have tanked this up. They're going to turn their sights here. Badger taking a lot. Oh. He got rooted. He got stunned. He's slowed. He's destroyed as well as their second Phoenix, but Captain Twig has respawned. He's the only one available, but they cannot end here. I don't love the call for the Phoenix instead of the Titan, but they maintain their lead, and they're going to have another chance to end it soon. Yeah, and you know, the craziest thing about it is, is SK, even once they push out all these minions, there is still barely any jungle camps for them at all. They have they, nothing to get. They're, they've been amazing about it, and Okay, see, Frezzy, I was with you the whole time, buddy, until you brought out the spike shell. I'm, I was just getting ready I'm to ask what board. the hell the difference I am not on board. Instead of getting 15% damage reduction, 10% damage has reflected back to the damaging god. This is not worth it. This is never, ever, ever, ever worth it. I mean, the only person this is really going to affect is Moex. Maybe Raffer. But they don't have enough damage. I mean, this doesn't affect... Or, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, uh, looking at reels. It'll affect reels. And that's pretty much it. It doesn't affect anyone else. It doesn't give them enough reflection. I mean, even if Ra hits for both of his moves, he'll take a maybe 150 damage at maximum damage. Now, maybe. Now, looking on the flip side of things here, why do you think Maniac decided to go with the chins instead of something a little bit more protective? Oh, he wants to go in for the damage. I mean, he needs the opportunity to get into those team fights and really add a little bit more than Thunderstrike. I mean, he bought defense in Witchblade. He bought defense in Urchin, and the Urchin's not paying off. I mean, he has, I think, one assist since the Urchin buy, uh, making it one stack comparatively to Deep Frezzy, who had a kill and no assist. That thing is fully stacked, ready to rock. Well, it looks like a giant... 
Fire Giant Temp is going to be happening relatively soon here as the Girdle of Might has been purchased by Sayo. It's not every day you see that. Uh, we used to see that a lot on Nua when Nua would, I guess, go for the split push. But in this case, I don't know. I mean, now, right now, this, this Girdle of Might... This Girdle of Might will affect everyone. As he gets to the final tier, he has two options. He has a Girdle of Might, which is going to allow him... Uh, he's going to allow him to get into the deep end, uh, give yep. himself massive damage, go for the blow-up, and infecting his ult in a great way no matter where he is. Or, or it could bring up Girdle of Support, which will give a little bit of damage to everyone on the team, but not nearly as much. Yeah, and you know, Zeros, Zeros has done a good job this game. I yeah. really think he has. He's been making his presence known, but you know we haven't really seen him convert too many things into kills, which right. is why he finds himself at 17 experience right now. He needs to be level 20, and as this game is going, he's not going to have the time to get that experience. You know, and on a character as mobile as Tyr, you really would have expected him to be a little bit more, uh, I think, controlling in the lanes. More yeah. blinks, more ganks, and we haven't seen that all that much, uh, whereas Nemesis has been everywhere. You can see that reflected really in the win-loss percent of 59% and a 2.8 KDA. Surprisingly, though, Tier does have a higher GPM, but I don't think that's going to help him going into this game yep. uh, as Iraffer's at 14,000 gold and Zeros hasn't broken 11 yet. Yeah, it's uh, pretty impressive, but I gotta say, dude, I actually really like Moex in this game. I oh, think yeah. Onher has really made a huge difference. Now, granted, he is going up against the Reels. Right. And, you know, but we've seen that Geb hasn't really been in those team fights, so he's allowed to shine. I mean, if you're... If you're a fan of Badger, you need him to stay in these team fights and basically protect his squishies. So, you he, know, like we talked him. about before, you know, the shell coming out from Captain Twig, it looks like Badger has opted into Blink, but it's so late in the game now. The initiations aren't as important. You're not trying to steal away the Gold Furies. You're not trying to steal away yep. the opportunities uh, to get in that. As it looks like the, the pause is through, guys. We're going to jump back in with the conclusion of Mortality and SK. Um, now, Fire Giant is up, and it looks like the guys on Mort have started it up here. You can see Vex is in the background trying to control as much as possible, but he's about to get oh, oh. Twig with the choke. That's a lot of damage here. Raffer actually going to be chasing after Reels, and he's just waiting for him to drop down. And finally, the Geb Shield is going to be there, so it keeps him alive a little bit longer. Maniac able to get one. Moex able to get one. So much damage coming down. That Mo is a double X. kill. There's a the triple kill. Uh oh. Oh no. They're going for it. Captain Twig, the final one alive here, not going to have the opportunity. You know, that fight really hurt Captain Twig. He ulted just way too soon, didn't find the damage, and it allowed Fexus just to spend way too much time burning them down. They lost Jean Quay. They lost on her. But unfortunately, the tank survives, and a very high damaging physical survives, along with two waves of fire minions getting slammed down mid and right lane. Mortality still has, looks like, 15 seconds before Badger. That should be more than enough time for for them to shut this one down. Yeah, and the smart thing here is Sayo actually pushed up through the right side here, and he's going to be able to throw in some more damage with that wave. So this Titan should be going down relatively soon, but Mortality looked very Badges good. Up. Sayo Link's actually in. getting his nope, first two enough. kills. Not enough. In that tough fight. You know, even if Badger was able to get a kill there, by doing damage, all of the... Um all of the firemen would have turned to him and just blew him up in a heartbeat. That's true. That is going to make sure that Mortality uh, retains their first seed in Europe with a 7-3 standing comparatively to 2-3 and 4, all being at 6 wins, 4 losses. And with that, you got to look, and normally we say a player name, I'm going to say the team here because that was just unbelievable teamwork. Saya went for the split pushes the entire time, forcing out early rotations and using that to get early gold. Moex with a ridiculous amount of pressure in the game was allowing, just shutting down reels nonstop. Frezzy, with his extraordinarily unusual build, didn't put up that much damage, but his control was great, and his objective push was brilliant. Vex very, very good. 20,000 damage. I Raffer, 14,000. Sayo, 28k. 28,000. From the island. From the island, and most importantly... You know, his stats don't really reflect how much damage he did. But I do believe we actually do have the Moex triple kill here lined up for you guys on here making his presence known here, DM. So, you know, you talk a lot about which hunter is better. And when, whenever you talk about this, we are talking about if the hunters are max level. You know, they're talking about max build, able to do their thing. On her has great base damage, and if he's only going to land two or three hits, he's going to wind up doing more than other hunters. And yep. right there, you can saw it ref you see it reflected. He's able to get shots off. Oh, yeah. He has the extra penetration oh, yeah. going, stunning people out, and the huge ultimate straight through three people doing enough damage to shut him down. Yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, we will have the North American side taking the stage here at the SPL.